Assalamu alaikum everybody, welcome back. This would be, I think, our lately, our most mm -hmm. requested video and that is what about visas to move to Malaysia? That's right. So you guys know that we are relocating from Canada to Malaysia. We are currently in Malaysia right now for a short term kind of stay. We've been here for a few months and I think we've done our fair share and research about how to come here and how yeah. to live here. Uh, but before we get into that, you guys, we want to give a huge shout out to BookBolt for sponsoring today's video. We'll get into that in a little bit, but let's just quickly start off with a little disclaimer. We're not professionals when it comes correct. to this visa thing. So correct. take everything we say with a grain of salt. This is just stuff that we have learned along the way. In fact, with Himalayan pink salt, because it's technically <laughs> better for you than regular table salt. There you go, perfect. So take it with a grain of Himalayan pink salt. So there are a number of visas that we, we are have. focusing on four, four. today. We're going to talk talk about the four that are most applicable to us. Mm -hmm. And again, we're speaking from our own experience. And I think in general, most people will fall into one of these four yeah. categories. Yeah, as like a foreigner family um, situation. Exactly. So again, we're we're going to talk about these four things, four different types of visas, so that you can learn how you can possibly move here and live here. Yep. However, we're not going to disclose which one we're doing right now because it's still in the process. Yep. So, and we'll share that kind of as the process goes along, once it's approved, everything is good to go and we're actually living here, then we'll share what the process was like. Yep, absolutely. And as she mentioned before, we are not experts. Big disclaimer, you <laughs> will be able to find information about all of these four different types of visas on YouTube, online, that will give you a much deeper breakdown. We're just kind of hitting the surface level. That's so. right. So before we dive into today's content, we want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, BookBolt. BookBolt is one of the best low content book publishing softwares on the market today. So from your idea to creation, BookBolt can assist in all aspects of your low content book publishing business. Not only does it streamline the entire publishing process, but it also provides the best research tools. So for instance, Let's look at one of their analytics tools and let's say that we want to publish a Dua journal, which would be perfect for Ramadan or if you're going for Umrah or Hajj. So you go to the website here, click products, then type in the word Dua journal and this is what comes up. It shows you the best selling Dua journal is selling for $14.99 and they sell actually around 84 books per month. Now let's talk about the benefits of using BookBolt. With this innovative software, you can become a published author on Amazon with zero upfront costs. Imagine putting a notebook, journal, planner, whatever on Amazon and getting a side income. And the best part, Amazon handles all the printing, shipping and customer service so you can focus on creating more content. So guys, all you need is an Amazon KDP account and a BookBolt membership. So why should you use BookBolt? It's simple, basically. You'll be creating a passive income stream that actually works. All you have to do is take a look at all of these amazing testimonials for people that are already using BookBolt and making and selling books through Amazon. All right guys, with BookBolt, you can create books in less than 10 minutes and anyone can do this from anywhere in the world. Now here's the exciting part. Our audience gets a free trial plus 20% off the monthly cost for life. Visit the link in the description and use our code Saleh when signing up. So what are you guys waiting for? Click the link in the description, use our code Saleh and start creating with BookBolt today. Now let's dive right in to the topic for today's video, which is the four different categories of visas that you guys can apply for to live in Malaysia. So the number one visa that you guys have probably already heard of is called MM2H, which stands for Malaysia, my second home. Basically what you're gonna do is take a bunch of your money, keep it in a Malaysian bank for a certain amount of time, and then you can use that money later on to invest in property, and that's how you get your golden ticket. So currently the MM2H program consists of a three tier. You have silver, gold, and platinum. This, since we started looking into visas to Malaysia, this is actually the third iteration of, of MM2H. So with the silver, you would invest 500,000 Malaysian ringgit in a fixed deposit, um, and you would get a five year renewable visa. And after one year, you're able to, re you're able to take 50% out and use it towards a down payment on a home, uh, medical costs, travel costs, that sort of stuff. And I'll put the conversions on screen so you know how much that is in Canadian dollars and US dollars. So we don't just throw out some random prices. <laughs> All right, so next you have the gold, which is two million ringgit. Again, fixed deposit. And you are able to take that money, half of it out, 
uh, 365 days later and you are able to use it, both the gold and the silver. Um, it has to be a minimum 750,000 ringgit house that you're putting a down payment on because they do have classifications mm -hmm. for foreigners versus domestic and the house prices. And same thing, you can also use that for medical or travel expenses. And that brings us to option number three, the platinum, which is a 5 million ringgit mm -hmm. fixed deposit. Um, but Flat. that gets you eligible for permanent resident status. Um, mm -hmm. The difference with there is that you would have to put down, your down payment would be for a house that is worth 1.5 million ringgit. Mm -hmm. Um, again, medical tourism. Some of the issues, uh, not some of the issues, but some of the things that you need to take account of is that you have to be at least 30 years old for the main applicant. You must stay in Malaysia at least 60 days per year. The maximum child age is 35. They must be single. Um, parents and in-laws must be over 60. Medical insurance is required for anyone aged 59 and below and police and criminal check anyone over the age of 18. So for the first two visas in this three-tier category, what? how long is the visa valid for? Five years? Yeah, so the first one you have, the it's five years. Mm -hmm. I, sorry, I didn't mention, and the gold is, is 15 years. Okay. So it's five years, 15 years, permanent resident. Okay. So the only issue is that, and it is a big issue, is that it's yeah. a substantial amount of money for of people money. to put up and just say, hold on to my money. Yeah. It's kind and of, I'll talk to you of, in a year. It's kind of made for people that already have a very established income, mm -hmm. offshore income, that they're able to just take that chunk of money and just like let it sit there for a year. Not mm -hmm. a lot of people can do that. Yep. So it's kind of designed to be that way. However, we'll say that a few years ago when we looked into MM2H, the number was way, way higher. higher. Yeah. So it, the number has actually come down and this three tier thing didn't actually exist before, And they're actually so. not sure how long it's going to last. Yeah. So. And, and this changes all the time. Yeah. So Again, since we've been looking at this probably for the last five years, yeah. it's changed it's three changed. times. Yeah, it's changed yeah. a lot. And, and another caveat to that is that you need an income of 40,000 ringgit per month outside yeah. of the country, yeah. which translates to roughly around 10,000 Canadian. Yeah. Um, so whether that's for business or whatever you're doing, something to keep in mind. So again, yeah. not for everybody but certainly something that mm -hmm. would be applicable for some people. Yeah. Especially people that are older and maybe are retiring. Like a lot of the people that do MM2H are yep. usually retirees and they are kind of in that financial position that they can afford. And there pay. actually is another type of MM2H in Sarawak, yes. which is more for, more bleh, which is more focused <laughs> towards uh, retirees and, and yeah. elderly people. That's but right. again, you'll be able to find that online yeah. much more in depth. We're just trying to give you guys a brief overview. Yeah. The next one is work visas. And there are three different types of work visas. Mm -hmm. So you have your employment pass, your temporary employment pass, and your professional work visa. Yeah. So the first one would be applicable to most people, the employment pass. So it's for qualified, educated people with relevant experience. And that is good for one to five years and renewable. Mm -hmm. So somebody who, let's say, um, you're a contractor or you have some experience, yeah. you're an architect, whatever, and someone's hiring you, you have relevant job experience. Yeah. Um, so you're coming here for the purpose of, yeah. of this particular job. So for the company would take care of all the visa uh, situation. Um, and then with that, you are able to, and this is the only one of the three where you are able to bring your dependents on an employment pass with you. There so you the go. other two, the temporary employment pass, you don't need a specific qualification. This is more for things like um, unskilled, tra unskilled yeah. trades. You just get a job anywhere. Yeah, well, not thing. anywhere because there are specific, you know, in, mm. in agriculture, so farm workers, um, maids, uh, mm. that type of stuff. And this is good for up to two years. Um, and then professional visit pass is only for a specific period of time, like contract work. So you would have a one year contract mm -hmm. um, and you would fill that contract and then you would have to leave and, and come up with another source. Uh, yeah. another way to get into the country. This visa, this work visa, is generally the one that a lot of people can afford to do because mm -hmm. you're coming here for work. The third one is very recent. This actually came out just a few years ago. I think maybe even last year. It, yeah. it came out after COVID, which is applicable to a lot of content creators out there. It's called the Digital Nomad Visa. Um, it is still quite new. There are a lot of people here on YouTube that I've actually watched myself. That basically, you have to be a digital nomad. So you have to have kind of like an online office offshore. You're getting paid offshore. So wherever your country is, like, let's say we're talking about us. Um, you know, we do YouTube. We also have online businesses. So that would we, we would, uh, you know, qualify for that. And our income is offshore. And you can do that while living here because you're working online mm -hmm. and that is valid for a year. And then after that year, you can apply again. And also you can bring your kids. 
but only for yeah. a maximum of two years. Yeah, that's so the thing is it's only valid for two years. It is still quite new and there's actually a lot of countries that are doing this digital nomad pass mm -hmm. right now. Um, so it is really new and yeah. the requirements are kind of in yeah, and out. So it takes time. It takes yeah, time. Yeah, so it's, it's like a digital freelancer. So yeah. anybody who's in the digital world and that can be like software engineers, cybersecurity mm -hmm. people, content they also, creators. They all content creators, they also qualify under yep. this particular visa. Mm -hmm. um, so this one is going to be a thousand ringgit uh, for the main applicant and then 500 ringgit per dependent. Mm -hmm. um, one of the issues that I will say, having looked into it, mm -hmm. is that there is a lot of paperwork. Yeah, it's a lengthy is. process, and and like just looking at if you just look it up, like the specifications, they want bank statements for this long, they want mm -hmm. this, they want this, this, this. Yeah, it's they want, very hectic. They, even like your marriage certificate, they want yeah. it like notarized, and you know you take it to the Malaysian embassy, yeah. and they, you know, there's just a lot of like kind of like it's, red a, tape. it's a bit of a headache. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. So for, at least and it from is the new, reading. so I wonder mm -hmm. if that's why they have all these requirements. So but it, one, maybe it might change. But one thing, it is the coolest sounding visa. Yeah, I'm a digital nomad. Digital nomad. <laughs> Yeah. The last and final is a Labuan visa. So what is a Labuan visa? So basically you're coming here and you're opening up a business, but it's a certain business and it's in a, only in a certain location. Correct. So this would be in Labuan in Malaysia. So it's a renewable two-year visa. You can live on mainland Malaysia, yeah. um, but the business would be located in Labuan, Malaysia. You can bring immediate family as dependents. And this is where it gets, again, you'll find information elsewhere, but shareholder dividends are tax-free. Um, and the, the renewal process is simple and done every two years. Mm -hmm. That is also an option in terms of the business aspect of it. And yeah. again, this is only for, there are definitely more yeah. types of visas that you can you can apply for yeah. or that might, might be more relevant to your field. And these are just the ones that we kind of focused on because these are the ones that we've looked into ourselves. Yeah. So, And we're picking one of these. We want to know, what which one do you guys think that we are applying for or have applied for and are waiting for approval from? Let us know in the comments mm -hmm. down below. We'd love to hear. And also let us know what you would do. Yeah. In your in your particular situation, what is more appealing to you? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, there's there's pros and cons to every one of them. Some are require a lot of mm -hmm. capital. Some require startup businesses. Mm -hmm. Some require a lot of paperwork. Um, and then mm -hmm. some require that it's all done by other people. So let us know in the comments, you guys, what else you want to see from us in this Hijra series. If you missed the previous videos, all you have to do is go to our channel and click the playlist called Hijra. And in there, we talk about our journey of moving from Canada to Malaysia, all the things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see you guys in our next one. All right, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.